Okay, so which MacBook should you buy and how much do you actually need to spend? Because with Airs and Pros and M2 and M3 chips, different sizes and prices ranging from £999 up to over £7,000 for a top spec max, there's a lot to think about. But that's why I'm here and hopefully by the end of the video, you'll have a better idea which one is right for you so you don't spend too much money. And if you do enjoy the video, a little like and subscribe will be lovely. But why am I making this video now? Well, it's because Apple have just refreshed these, the MacBook Airs with M3, the 13 and the 15. And these come in at the same price as the previous M2 Airs. This is the 13, which has now had a price cut down to 999. It's 100 quid off, meaning it replaces the old M1 Air as the new entry level model. This came out back in 2020, still a very nice laptop, and it does have that nice taper design that we've lost with the new models. But this is now no longer officially sold new by Apple. You can still buy it refurbished, you can buy it from retailers, and actually for around 750 quid or so, it's not a bad idea, although the webcam is not very good and it is a four-year-old laptop. So now you have five options to choose from. You've got the cheapest entry-level MacBook, the M2, which will set you back 999 pounds, a thousand. Uh, then for 100 quid more, you've got the new M3 Air, and for 200 more than that, the 15 inch if you fancy. And then for those of you who can spend, well, quite a bit more actually, you've got the MacBook Pros, both the 14 and the 16 with brighter screens, more ports, better performance, and a crazy number of options, including the M3 Pro and M3 Max chips. So these can get much more powerful, but also they were a lot more expensive. So now the entire lineup, bar the cheapest M2 MacBook, uses Apple's latest M3 chip, which makes them all a bit more future-proof, and also we're not really expecting any new releases to the MacBook lineup for probably the rest of the year. We will probably see new Mac Minis and Mac Studios and the desktop Mac Pro with the M3 chip come at uh, Apple's June event, WWDC, or launch just after, but they're the sort of desktop versions. In terms of laptops, MacBooks, I don't think we're going to see anything else new for a while, so it could be a good time to upgrade. So number one, let's talk about the M1, the M2, and the M3. Apple's switch from Intel to using their own chips with the M1 back in 2020 was a huge deal. Their own macOS software running on their own incredibly efficient hardware, it revolutionized the laptop market pretty much overnight, and it certainly made me switch from my old Dell XPS 15. Then a couple of years later, in 2022, Apple introduced the M2 chip, which was around 20% faster, but more importantly, the M2 powered MacBook Airs came with a big design refresh. Bigger, brighter screens, much better webcams, new colors, faster connectivity. It was a bit more expensive, but it was also a much nicer laptop. But then fast forward to Halloween 2023, and Apple's spooky fast event unveiled the new M3 chip, which first came to the MacBook Pros, and now, a few months later, we have the M3 Airs, which, as I say, come in at the same price as the previous M2, which has become the new entry-level model. Now, who said Macs aren't for gaming? Because I've been playing a bunch of this on my MacBook, Honkai Impact 3rd. It's a sci-fi adventure game which has just had a massive update with a ton of new features, including, and making it the perfect sponsor for this video, being able to play it on my Mac. And in case Honkai Impact 3rd rings a bell, it's from Hoyoverse, who also made Genshin Impact and Honkai Star Rail. And you can find it on iOS, Android, and Steam and Epic on PC. But this is their first game available on M-Series Max via the App Store, with full screen resolutions, 120Hz refresh rates, and it will also support Apple's upscaling tech, Metal FX. It's a genuinely massive game. You can sink dozens of hours into this, and with the new version 7.4 update, it's better than ever, with a new 3D combat system with free jumping, meaning you can battle enemies in the air, and entirely new story adventures on Mars, with new characters like the Lima, who's very elegant and a bit mad, can I like myself? Plus your old favorites. And speaking of characters, the detail and the animations have had a big upgrade as well. And so have the locations with better shading and effects. It really does look good. And alongside some very fancy new outfits, simply log into the game to get her share of Origin, which is Raiden May's s rank battle suit completely free. But the best bit, it's free to play. So if you fancy checking out Honkai Impact 3rd, and especially on Mac, then check out my link in the description below. Okay, history lesson over. The big question a lot of people do have is what's the difference between the M2 Air and the M3 Air? Is it worth paying £100 more for this over this? Well, in summary, Apple sells the M3 Air in both 13 and 15 inch sizes. The M2 did also come in a 15, but it seems to have been discontinued, so you can't officially buy it new from Apple. But visually, design-wise, the 2024 Air is identical to the previous 2022 except for the midnight color, which I have here on the M3 Air 15 inch and the 13 M2. 
Apparently, the uh, it's not a coating, it's like the chemistry they use to make the uh, material on the lid and the base of the new Midnight version on the M3, a little bit less uh, smudgy and fingerprinty, but as you can see, there's really not much difference there. Um, so yeah, design-wise, they're the same. Really, the new Air gets three main upgrades. The new faster M3 chip, which has more of a focus on graphics and gaming, and also a faster neural engine for Apple's expected big AI upgrade later this year. It also supports faster Wi-Fi 6E up from Wi-Fi 6, although you will need a 6E router to take advantage of that, and almost no one does right now. It can also output to two external monitors, whereas the older Airs are limited to one. It has an AV encoder, which is too complicated to explain right now, but basically means it will be able to stream videos more efficiently going forward. Slightly better voice isolation for the microphones, and the storage on the base model with 256 gigabytes is a bit faster. Is all that worth paying £100 more for the new M3? Probably. I mean, it's not a huge upgrade, but it makes it a bit more future-proof and it's not that much of a difference. The problem is, if you do go for this, and you can just go for the base model at uh, £1,099, but if you do fancy yourself more RAM, 16 gigabytes, or more storage, 512, which you might want to, and perhaps even you might want to go for the 15-inch, if you get this, the 15-inch M3 with 16 gigs of RAM, 512 storage, a decent spec, at which point you could just get yourself a MacBook Pro. So M2 Air, 999, M3 Air, 1099, Pro, 14-inch, 1699. So which is better? Well, the benefit of going for a MacBook Air is it's cheaper, it's thinner, it's lighter, and it's also fanless, so it's completely silent. However, the Pros have, well, a lot more of everything. They can be specced with more powerful M3 Pro and Max chips. They come with 512 gigs of storage as standard, double the air. And you can get up to eight terabytes of the stuff, plus up to 128 gigs of memory. It also has a much brighter and faster mini LED screen. The air is 500 nits, it's 60 hertz, and it is a regular LED LCD screen. The Pro is 600 nits in SDR and goes up to 1600 nits in HDR. And if using an app like Vivid, you can unlock across the whole desktop, making it a whole lot easier to see if you're out and about on a sunny day. It's also 120 hertz, or ProMotion as Apple call it, so everything feels a lot faster and smoother, and it's using a mini LED backlight, so you get much better contrast, deeper blacks, richer colors. Not everyone will care that much about those things, but certainly the Pro screen is much nicer. We have more ports with HDMI 2.1 and a full-size SD card reader, significantly better speakers, although the 15-inch Air does also have six speakers and is noticeably better than the 13-inch. Also, most models of the Pro have a longer battery life than the Air, except for the 14-inch with a Pro or Max chip, which is roughly the same, but all other Pros last a good couple of hours longer. And finally, the Pro has a fan, and while it is silent most of the time for just, you know, everyday stuff, when it needs to, it'll whir up to help keep the chip cool, meaning you get better performance. Although that is almost exclusively under sustained load, so everyday opening of apps and basic stuff you probably wouldn't notice. What I would say though is that for 95% of people, a MacBook Air is the one to go for. It's all you need. They're incredibly powerful laptops. And unless you need a brighter HDR screen and a lot of extra performance for uh, gaming or graphics work, video editing, photo editing, designing, you know, music production, then, you know, it's in the name. It is a professional laptop and it's a lot more expensive. For most of us, get yourself an Air. But if you do want the extra power and the nicer screen and you can afford it, or perhaps your business is buying it for you, then which MacBook Pro should you go for? Well, you've got two sizes, 14 and 16. And I feel a bit precarious holding them like that given how much they cost because the base model MacBook Pro 14 will set you back 1699. The cheapest 16 inch MacBook Pro because you have to get it with a higher end spec including the M3 Pro chip, this is 900 pounds more. And of course you will want to get it in space black which I have here, I've had it for a few months and uh, I have actually scratched it up a little bit. You can see some little scratches over there but it definitely does stand out compared to the more boring silver and space grays. But regardless, we're talking a lot of money for these higher end Macs, particularly the 16. But the main benefit of going for a Pro is that it gives you the option of an M3 Pro or M3 Max chip. I don't know who comes up with these names but essentially you can't go into an Apple store and say can I get a MacBook Pro with an M3 Pro? But I would argue, if you are going to go with a Pro, then you're investing in it for the extra power. So it makes sense to me to spend more and get an M3 Pro or an M3 Max chip. And each has various processor and graphics core configurations. And going for the Max chip unlocks the full storage and memory options. But my recommendation would be to get the M3 Pro. It's significantly more powerful than the base M3 and not as ludicrously expensive as the M3 Max, which I would probably avoid unless you know that you can take advantage of all the extra power. 
I am definitely simplifying things a bit here for this buying guide, but if you watch my full review of the top spec, fully maxed out 7,300 pounds M3 Max MacBook Pro, which I've been using for the past few months, it is insanely fast, but also absolutely overkill for almost everyone. So my pick of the bunch would be the 14 inch M3 Pro MacBook Pro in space black, of course, because it's fun. And that will also get you 512 gigs of storage and 18 gigabytes of memory, setting you back a cool 2,099 pounds or 1999 in the US. For any music or video producers, editors, photographers, designers, I reckon this is the one to get. Would I pay 500 more for a 16 inch version? Well, that's a tougher sell, I think. Yes, you do get the bigger screen and the M3 Pro chip is a slightly higher power version of it with more CPU and more GPU cores, but it's quite a lot more money. And I think what a lot of people tell me they like because they use the 14 inch every day is that because it is a good deal smaller and lighter, I mean, just if I put them side by side there, you can see how much more compact the 14 inches, you know, if we're working out and about on the go, great, you get that portability, not too far off the airs really, but then when you get back home or to the office, you can hook up to your external monitor and use a bigger screen that way. I do quite like the 16 because I am a video editor and I travel a lot and I don't always have a monitor, but I believe the 14 inch is the more popular version. Speaking of monitors though, the M2 Air can only output to one external screen, the M3 Airs, and soon to be via a software update, the base M3 MacBook Pro, these can output to two, but with the laptop screen closed, which is a bit annoying. The other frustration I have with Apple, and you probably know what I'm gonna talk about, RAM, memory, and just the upsell of everything. Once you start adding more RAM, more storage, they get so much more expensive. We're talking 200 quid extra to go from eight to 16 gigabytes, which is the base configuration on any of these, even the, M1 Air from four years ago came with eight gigabytes of memory, as does the base MacBook Pro, which is a bit crazy to me, given the price of this. And storage, of course, is easier to expand with external drives, but RAM, you're stuck with. But certainly, if you're going for a MacBook Pro, definitely get 16 gigs of RAM, because you really want to utilize that performance and not run out of memory as you have multiple apps open. And I think if you're going for the cheapest M2 Air, then you want a tighter budget and you just want a good all round laptop, probably stick with the base model. I think the M3 Air is a little bit trickier because you do have a lot of performance there. You might want to do some more intense multitasking and have tons of Chrome apps open and things like that. So I would probably go for 16 gigs of memory in this guy, which brings it up to 1300 pounds. And I do appreciate that Apple actually now stock a pre-made version of it. You don't have to customize it and then wait like weeks and weeks and weeks for it to ship. You can walk into a store and get one of these with 16 out of the box. Oh, and also if you do upgrade the memory, Apple also give you the slightly higher power processor, an extra two GPU cores. So uh, that's normally hundred quid by itself. So makes it a little bit less painful, I guess. The M3 Air is probably the best bet all round. It's future-proof and it's only 100 quid more than the M2 Air. Also, don't just look at Apple's website. Amazon and other retailers can be cheaper. And just because Apple doesn't stock it, like the old 15-inch M2, keep an eye out for good deals. And finally, dare I say, consider a Windows alternative to these MacBooks. I mean, for similar money, you'll get better screens, similar performance, especially with uh, Intel's new Core Ultra processors, lots of different form factors. And of course, the problem with MacBooks is they're very expensive, starting at 999 pounds for a new model. Obviously, Windows laptops, you can get a decent one for five or 600 quid. But I do also love a MacBook. And I think unless there's a specific Windows app you need, or you're playing a lot more games, then something like the M3 Air, probably just the base model, maybe with 16 gigs, is the one to go for. So hopefully that helped. And if you do have any other questions, drop a comment below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Oh, that's actually heavier than I thought, right here on the Tech Chat.